In my last video where I speed ran to Sister Fareed, I entered the painted world without killing a boss. This had me ask a question. How overpowered can you get in the most linear Dark Souls game without killing a single boss? Three things can be attributed to increasing the player character strength. Levels, weapon reinforcement, and certain rings. The main thing I focused on was weapon level. There are three different weapon reinforcements, but I'm going to be following the standard reinforcement. I will need to collect 12 Titanite Shards, 12 Large Titanite Shards, 12 Titanite Chunks, and a Titanite Slab for a maxed out weapon. Let's see how close we can get. I start as the Assassin class just for spook, but the Black Fire Bombs will be useful in the run. Speaking of useful things, there are some items to pick up at the start. I grab the Ashen Flask, this bonfire for later, and jump over to my first Titanite Shard. Now it is time to make our way to Firelink Shrine. The run is officially over as I kill Gundir. There's no way around this. He is required to progress, but from here on out, no bosses will be harmed at the making of my weapon. In Firelink, I perform the roof jump to get up to the nestling to trade. I give them a black firebomb and a normal firebomb. In return, they give me a large shard and chunk. I pick up the Estus Shard before heading to the Illusionary Wall to get the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. This ring increases souls gained from defeated enemies by 10%. I buy the dagger from the Shrine Handmaiden to make my life a little easier and head to the High Wall of Lothric. There is a lot of grabbing items. I will only cover the important things, but I pretty much pick up everything throughout the world. I head over to the right and kill the Puss of Man with fire bombs. His enemies drop Titanite Shards the first time you kill him. I also pick up this bow which will be useful later before continuing on the proper path. At the tower on the wall bonfire, I grab another Titanite Shard before grabbing the bonfire. I kill another Puss of Man to receive another shard before resetting my health. I set up a ladder warp before heading down below to the first room on the left. There is a shard for me to pick up in the back room. I continue further inside where I grab the Estus shard and make my way to another Titanite shard. I heal up before quitting out to bring it back to the top of the ladder. I set up the ladder warp again but this time I'm using it to grab the Lawford banner without having to backtrack. I receive the banner from Emma and quit out. I'm finished with this area so I'm going to skip Vort to gain access to the Undead Settlement. If you are curious about the glitches being used, check out my speedrunning Dark Souls 3 the way Miyazaki intended video where I go into more detail about these glitches. I skip past Vort and raise the banner to the Undead Settlement. I grab my 7th shard past the Evangelist guard in the Estus shard before making my way to the dilapidated bridge. Before I make it to the bonfire, there are two shards to pick up. The first one is to the side path. The second one is up a ladder with the Evangelist, but they decided to drop down for me, making picking it up easy. I kill the crystal lizard by the bonfire for the sharp gem and grab the bonfire. For some reason, I decided it was smart to grab the bone before speaking to the giant shooting arrows. Once I get back and collect my souls, I grab the mortician's ashes. I leave to the road of sacrifices for some reason. I grab the bonfire before heading right back to the undead settlement because I forgot a shard. ADHD is crazy sometimes. I drop down the side path, kill the peasant, and grab my shard. Now we can head into the road of sacrifices. The first little area has nothing of importance, but the crucifixion woods is another story. I grab a shard while being chased by the horde and I turn around and head towards the Black Knight. I grab the weapon of this run, the Cell Sword Wind Blades. Further down is the Farron Coal to allow Andre to infuse them with the Sharp Gem. I still need one more shard so I drop down from the halfway fortress. I head to the left and the 12th shard is just sitting there. I make my way to the Crucifixion Woods Bonfire, but first I pick up the Grass Crest Shield. This shield increases stamina recovery so with a fast attacking weapon it is a no brainer. I fight a dog for the bonfire before heading to the Fire Link. I infuse the Wind Blades with the Sharp Gem before upgrading them to plus 3. I sell some useless items at the Shrine Handmaiden before leveling up. I put 2 points into Dexterity for the Wind Blade stat requirement and put the last 4 into Vigor for more health. I warp back to the Crucifixion Woods and make my way to the Swamp. On my way to the swamp, I get overconfident and flattened like a pancake. I went back and decided to cheese them to make myself feel better. I grab the bonfire before equipping the dagger to do the best we invented since loaf bread. I run towards the third fire and dagger walk through the thick swamp. I get to the fire without aggroing anything and can just snuff it out before warping back to the starting bonfire. I continue on the normal way, taking out the last two fires as I make my way to the next bonfire. I climb up this ridiculously long ladder. I hope the person who made it is doing okay. Ladder smiths need more praise. 
Once I reach the top, I get on the elevator that could not have been at the bottom. I drop down towards the secret area where there are two crystal lizards. I struggle to kill the first one and have to reload to kill the second. They each drop a large shard for me and I warp to Firelink for some more upgrades. I upgrade my Estus flask and start to leave. I sit down at the bonfire and I remember I can upgrade my weapon. I have a big brain, yes. I upgrade it once to plus four and then leave to the crucifixion woods to perform sage skip. I do some parkour to jump out of Crystal Sage's arena, making my way into the Cathedral of the Deep. I grab the Cleansing Chapel bonfire before making my way through the Cathedral. I still never chatted with the giant, so I get pelted by him and hit with the maggot bleed attack. At least I got this cool bone out of it. I grab the Lloyd Sword Ring to increase my attack by 10% when my HP is full. I then died in the cubby to the giant. Did not think he could grab me in here. I make my way into the cathedral where I kill both giants to get large shards from each of them. I still need one more large shard before I get another upgrade, but I know a way. In Firelink, I buy some arrows before heading to the high wall. The Lothric Wyvern gives a large shard when its health is less than 20%. I just stood on the staircase and pelted it with arrows. It only took 5 minutes. That seems like a lot for one shard, but that is nothing. I head to Firelink to upgrade my weapon to plus 5 and level up some more before I head to the Painted World of Ariendel. From Software and all their infinite wisdom put the way into the Painted World and the Cleansing Chapel. This is an early area of the game, but at least they put a developer message that says to go to the Lawford Castle first. As stated, I am smart and tried to kill the Great Wolf. Killing the wolf will give 3 large shards. I quickly see this is stupid and just grab the rope bridge bonfire instead. I take the side path where there is a lizard trying to lure me into a trap but it falls off the edge and dies for me. Perfect as this is a large titanite shard for me. I do something smart for once and turn my sound down before continuing on. Wonderful silence. I grab the Corvian settlement bonfire and make my way to fight a Corvian knight. They drop large titanite shards so I killed my first one to see how bad it would be. I also did research and took this side path to a lizard that dropped down but I plunged to kill it. This gives me two more large shards. I make my way back up top to jump and grab the crow quills. They will be useful later. I need two more large shards for a plus six reinforcement so I farm the Corvian knight for it. Once I get the last one I head to fire link to reinforce the weapon. I also level up while I'm there. For the next upgrades, Titanite chunks are needed. Corvians can drop them but with a 2% chance. There is a way to get to an area with easier enemies to kill and a 6% drop chance, but it is not easy. First you need to perform a bow glitch. I slash with the twin blades, switch out to the quills, and backstep. While backstepping, I hold forward and the left hand strong attack. I get this cut animation of the quills digging into the ground. I press the right hand strong attack button to do a jump. Let me show you the collision meshes so you can see what is going on. The goal is to land up on this grave. Once up here, another extremely difficult jump is done to get up to this platform. From here, a series of easier jumps are done following a path. At one point you have to seam walk and it does not seem too bad. Let me show you what it would look like if you were trying to do this glitch without collision visible. Yeah, good luck. Lord Miyazaki's PvP experience, what a name, discover this out of bounds. There's a reason he titled it hardest out of bounds glitch I've ever done. I'm certainly not going to do it legit, but check out his video for the path and him demonstrating the glitch. After following the path for a bit, we head to where the drop to the unattended graves would be after Osiris. The game still has it modeled in, so we drop down. I enter past the illusionary wall where the path for the dragon gesture is located, then I quit out. This will reset the area so once I head back out, I'm in the unattended graves instead of the cemetery of ash. There are two chunks to grab here. The first one is by the warden and the dog. The second one is by the warden and the dogs, plural. These grave wardens are the enemies I was talking about that drop chunks. I spent some time farming them, but not after too much time, I got a chunk from one of them. I only wanted to show that technically this was possible and the most optimal way to do things, but not reasonable. The reasonable way, if you could call it that, would be farming the Corvian Knights or Millwood Knights. With the two chunks, I upgraded my weapon to plus seven, but don't worry as two chunks can be achieved after killing Van Helm. I went to farm the Corvian Knights, but they refused to drop chunks. I spent two and a half hours farming them. 
I started to get suspicious that the wiki was wrong and I cheated. I increased my item discovery with items and one shot of the enemies. Not too long after I finally got one to drop to confirm they do indeed drop, but I'm going to have to grind six more of them. I only wanted confirmation that they dropped so instead I just saved nearly 18 hours of my life by spawning in the chunks. I also gave myself 900,000 souls or how many I would have gotten from farming the chunks. There is one last piece needed to max a weapon and there is one way for me to get it. I warp to the rope bridge bonfire and drop it down. I climb down to the icy field. Past the ice grabs there is supposed to be a ladder but I could not find it. Turns out I needed to kill the birch woman at the end and the ladder appears. I climb this excessively long ladder and once I get to the top there is another. Come on. Now after this ladder I grab the titanite slab before making my way to firelink to become overleveled. I upgrade the wind blades to max and go to level up. I level dex to 60, vigor to 30, and endurance to 24. Now I'm going to show the boss fights in reverse order to keep things interesting. I eat some grass, apply resin, parry the opener, and forget how to repost. Cell sword, twin blade, lizard brain, go burr. I'm determined, so I wait for an attack to parry and get it. I repost this time for some Elden Ring levels of damage. He starts to do his phase transition and I hit him while he is down. He would do the same. He tries to summon his clone, but I kill him before he can get the chance. Walnir is boring. He is a boring boss. His bracelets go down on only a couple hits. He is dead. I enter the fight, applying some lightning and melt the watcher. Second one did not even have time to get up. Second phase of the fight, I just play bad, but when I get hits in, they chunk. Eventually, the abyss watchers go down easily with subpar gameplay. Deacons are a little annoying as I can't just L1 spam yet. I go around killing the glowing deacons before the main guy shows up. I apply the lightning resin and melt them, easiest boss. Who would die to them? For Crystal Sage, I have the Flynn's Ring equipped for some extra damage. I forgot to record myself grabbing it, but it is found in the Undead Settlement. I apply Dark Pine resin and run towards the Sage. I spam L1 and throw in an L2 to kill the Sage in one cycle. For the giant tree, I use fire, big surprise. In the first phase, all those little pus balls can be one-shotted, even the big sack. In the second phase, the big sack takes two hits and I swing trying to hit the arm. I'm pretty sure I hit the air, but somehow the tree is felled. Now we have Fort. I put on some dark pine resin and banish Fort to the Shadow Realm. Skipping the second phase, how about skipping the second attack? This is all extremely dumb and should not be done, but it is amazing that it can be done. If you enjoyed me going out of my way to be overkill against bosses, then consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for wasting your time with me.